So I'm going to talk about you know the internet and the HTML language, which is the language that people, uh, when you go to a web server, um, you're getting information back from the web server in the format of HTML. So we'll talk about uh, what happens when you're on the internet, and what is a server, what is a client, what is a URL, and that kind of thing. And then at Monmouth University, we actually have a server called Zorak 2, where you'll be able to host your own uh, web pages off. So let me just ask a question. If, uh, if you go to pick up your cell phone and you go to call a friend, let's say you have a friend named Mary, and you go through your cell phone and you find Mary and then you hit call, what happens? It's just like, all right, it calls Mary, but the, so does it, does it, does your phone dial like M-A-R-Y and send that out somewhere? And gets her number from the, what it saved on her, I guess. So, okay, so you say, well, so what I'm doing is I'm going, I'm going over an example that hopefully you guys know, that I'm going to go over the same thing with the internet, and it's very, very similar, but... You don't. The, your phone doesn't dial M A R Y and send that out. And and if it when it does send something out, where does it send the information to? And in order for Mary to answer the call, is there something she had to do before you made the call for her phone to be able to to answer the call? <clears throat> so on your cell phone, you when she became your friend and you recorded her number, you would type in the name is Mary, the number is, and you'd start punching in numbers and then hit save. Now, if you go to call Mary, you, you might find Mary in your index, and when you hit call, the phone knows to find the number that goes with Mary, and then dials those numbers. And then, uh, do you guys use the word dial? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I saw a rotary. You know why that was? What's that? I said I saw a rotary. Okay. Okay. House. That comes from the phones. You saw. I'm just thinking for a minute. You might not even know what I'm saying when I say dial. But okay. So it's it enters the numbers or dials the numbers for Mary. But something had a, had you had to have a map that said Mary's number is this, and then your other friends. Somehow a map of the numbers had to be there. So then the phone num you know the 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 number got dialed. And in order for Mary to receive the call, what did she have to do before you made the call? She had to buy a phone and register with the phone company to say, and the phone company would assign her a number. And then once she's on the, the phone network, she's kind of acting like a server. So a server is something that is active and will accept any request coming into it at all times. It's just sitting there going, would anyone like to make a request to talk to me? And if so, I will immediately connect to them. That's called a server. So when you have a computer that is a server, like a web server, you know, you can go down to Staples, you can buy a computer, plug it into the internet. That's one thing. But you can run software on it that makes it a server. So it's software that keeps saying, would anyone like to talk to me? Would anyone like to talk to me? And if someone tries to talk to it, it'll, it'll respond. So what's happening on your cell phone is Mary is a name that's easy for you to remember. Numbers are kind of hard to remember especially if you have a lot of friends, you can't remember all the numbers, but you can remember their names. Names are easy to remember, numbers are hard to remember, but every phone that's out on the phone network is assigned a unique number. So all you have to do is punch in her name and her number, and then you said all you have to do from that point on is just remember her name. So if you go to www.facebook.com, you bring up a web browser, you type in www.facebook.com and you hit enter. What happens? It's actually very, very similar to the phone thing. So, using the phone thing as an analogy, what would you say is happening? What would you think is happening? Any guess? It's going to go to the server. Okay, so there is a, so this is not a person talking on the other end like a phone. There's a computer connected to the internet. It's turned into a server, so it has software running on it saying, if anyone would like to talk to me, or if anyone would like to connect to me, I'll send something back to them. Um, but how do we find it with this name, Facebook.com? Is there, so, is there a machine with that, with that name to it? Is there some machine somewhere with that unique name to it? Or is that just like Mary, that it's just a name that maps to a number and then you go to that number? So, 
Okay, so let me just pause for a second. Hey, how you doing? So the question then is, what is a web server? Um, a web server, this is uh, the sources. I got this from Wikipedia very recently. So the primary function of a web server is to deliver HTML pages to the requesting clients. So it's just, for example, what a client is, when you go to facebook.com and hit enter, you're the client, Facebook is the server. So you're coming to it and you're saying, um, and it's going to reply to you, not by having a human being say hello, it's going to reply to you by sending you a file um, uh, using hypertext transfer protocol. So uh, this means that the, the server is going to deliver an HTML document, and it could be you know images and scripts and that kind of stuff. But that's basically what a server is doing: is it's sitting there waiting for you to make a request to it, and it's going to because it's a web server, it's going to basically send you files back that are in a, a language called uh, HTML, which is hypertext markup language. So a server would have to connect to the internet run software on it that makes it answer anybody who makes a request to it, plus it would have to prepare some files in the HTML format so it could send them back to you in case you requested them. So, um, okay, so now I wanted to just go over the, the idea that um, a server like www.facebook.com, this is actually a name which then maps to a number, just like you know, cell phone example, Mary would have to map to a number. So, but it's not your responsibility to type into your computer, Facebook equals the number like it is on your cell phone. Where you, every friend you have, you have to type it in. So, um, the internet will put that together for you. So, what I wanted to do was, I wanted to, um, I'm going to bring up this, I'm going to go to this command window. So, if you type in, CMD in this window, and I put the instructions in the slide. What happens is this is what a Microsoft Windows uh, oper the operating system looked like probably in the mid to late 80s. So if you, that's probably before you guys were born, right? Ladies. Ladies, okay. <laughs> so right around the time you were born, or just before you were born, if you bought a, a Microsoft computer and turned it on, this is what your entire screen would look like. As time went on, they came up with the idea of the windows and the icons and using the mouse to click on them. But before that, you would type in whatever command you wanted. So for example, you could type, if you wanted to use Microsoft Word, you might have to say W-O-R-D space a file name and then hit it and then that would kick off Word. Now you could just move the mice and click on something. <clears throat> so this got replaced with what you normally see. But when they replaced it, they realized there's a lot of people who like using some of the older commands, so they left it around but you just have to go and dig for it to find it. So there's a command I want to use called ping. Um, have you ever heard the expression ping? To ping something? BBM, that's all I've heard it for. What's that? I only heard it for like BBM phones. You ping someone to like get their attention, but. Right, so it's, it's just kind of uh, just like a are you there? Yeah. And if so, they reply, right? So we could say ping and then a server's name, www.facebook. And you could do this if you want and hit enter. So what I'm doing is I sent a message to the Facebook server. It's basically saying, are you there? And if it's there, it will reply. It'll tell us uh, how long it took to reply. So it's 106 milliseconds. So that's for us to send a message out to the Facebook server out in California and get it back. So well, that's very quick. But one of the things it did, it gave us the, uh, the phone number of the server. That's the number of the machine. Did any of you do this just now? Oh yeah. oh yeah. Did you get a different number than me? Sometimes some students get a different I got number. Seventy and sub seventy-four. You got seventy. Sub seventy-four. Okay, and everything else was the same. Yeah. So it's a, that happens to be a Facebook thing. They have many servers because they have so many people doing it. So you're actually talking to a different machine than I am. So, but anyway, if you bring up a web browser, and remember that number, but if you bring up a web browser, and instead of going to www.facebook. Right, so I said, like with a, with your cell phone, there's two ways you could call your friend Mary. One would be to hit the Mary button, which will then dial her number. The other way would be just dial her number directly. That's right. There's two ways to call Mary. So there's two ways to get to Facebook. One is to type in Facebook and have it translate to the number. The other one is to just go directly 
to the number. And we go to 69.171.229.74. When I go straight there, Mine work. Did you use 74 or 70? I used 70. I used 74 and mine work. Yeah. Okay, but you guys, I don't know why it's blocking mine, but anyway, so all three of you got it? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's another way. Um, that's another way to go to the website. So let me just, uh, uh, so basically what I'm doing here, hopefully a web browser will come up in a second. So I'm basically doing the ping, Facebook, to get the number, and then once I get the number, um, like I said, there's two ways you could call your friend Mary. One is you could call Mary and let the phone figure out what the number is. And the other one is dial the number directly. Same thing's true with the internet. You could go directly to the IP address, the internet protocol address, or you can go to facebook.com and then the internet will translate it to the number and get you there. So, let me see if this basically saying I want HTTP, I cover this in a, a slide or two up ahead, HTTP is uh, basically saying I want to connect to another computer using the hypertext uh, transfer protocol. So I want to talk to that computer using this passing HTML file. So what was the number then? 69.171.229.74. Uh, Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Can you log to Facebook itself? Like what you just did it regular, just type in Facebook. Yeah, it's that's not blocking me from that. Works on your your guys' computer, so that's good. Um, okay. So, uh, okay. So then, what is a URL? So a URL is a uniform resource locator. So, for example, www.facebook.com is the URL for the Facebook servers. Um, so then it is used, this is the name like Mary on your cell phone, it's the name that gets translated into a number. And I kind of wish the number came up on my browser, but you guys have seen it. So, um, and that's the number that's, you know, the name that's used to translate to the number. The URL can be used, it's a very easy thing to remember. And if you wanted to, you can buy a URL. If there's some name that's not currently taken, you can go to a company like GoDaddy and buy it for about $12 a year. That's what they're going for. That doesn't mean you have a web server, it just means you own this name. And you could say this name points to this machine. And then you'd have to buy a machine from Staples and put it in your house or you know, get a server somewhere. You could also buy the server space from GoDaddy and then say point this name to the GoDaddy server and put some files there. And they charge you space for maybe $50 a year. And then if you want to build a website and don't know how to build a website, they'll charge you like hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a website. That's where they make a lot of their money from. <coughs> so, um, and then what is HTTP, which is the thing you always type in front of a URL. Uh, that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. 
So when you bring up a web browser and you type HTTP colon slash slash www.facebook.com, what you're really saying is you would like to communicate to a server, and the way you're going to communicate to it is if you're going to be passing HTML files back and forth. And then you give the URL for the machine you're trying to connect to. So basically typing this in, you're saying, I would like to connect to this machine and talk to it by passing HTML files back and forth. Okay. So here is a, uh, here's basically a little picture. So here's your PC. You're sending a message to www.facebook.com. You're going into the internet, so this internet is the, this cloud represents the internet. Somewhere in here there's a table that translates www.facebook.com is equal to the IP address, and then I just started making up some numbers, but tonight the, the number was whatever the number changes to. If you do this a couple months from now, you, Facebook could have a different set of numbers if they have more people, that might happen. So then you're sending a message into the internet saying, I would like to go to this server. This server gets translated into a number, and then this number, the message then gets sent to the machine carrying that number. The message, your, your machine also has a unique IP address. That would be like your phone number. You tell, in, in your message, you give your IP address so when it gets to the server, the server will send a file that is of type HTML back to you and it has to know where it's sending it to. So you gave it your number and said, I would like an HTML file, send it back to this IP address. So that came back to your machine. Now you can talk back and forth with that because each one of you knows each other's number. So when you send messages, you know the number it's, it's coming from. Okay, so a web server sends you HTML files. So a web server sends you a file that contains HTML code, and we'll look at an example of that in a second. When you receive that, you look the, your browser reads those codes and displays a picture, a, a web page, based on what, it's, what it sees. The files typically end in .html. You know how like all your files have different extensions, like uh, Word ends in docx? And Excel ends in Excel, SX, right? So different files have different extensions on the end. But files that contain HTML code, which is what web service send to you, and your browser displays it based on its instructions, they typically end in .html, but they could also end in .php or ASP or JSP. Have you ever seen those websites? Okay. And then Microsoft gets rid of the L makes it HTM. So they, they have various endings, but your web browser would know if it saw any one of these endings, it goes, oh, I know what that is, and displays it. So your web browser can understand HTML code. Based on its instructions, it will display a picture. So, for example, we'll just get, okay. So this is an example of an entire HTML file. It does kind of look a little like English, but for example, if this file was on a web server somewhere, and you brought up a web browser and said, connect me to that web server, I want this file, and this file came back. Um, what this is basically saying is, this is a document, its type is HTML, this tag is the beginning of the HTML part, and this tag is the end of it. So a slash followed by some word means the end of this one. The body of it, and the body ends over here, the body of it, I'm saying, has a background color of aqua. And then the text, and what this is basically saying, and this is what we'll learn later on in this course, what all these tags mean. This is saying like a headline one. So this would be like in big print. Welcome to my page. And then that's the end of the headline. And then I can, you know how when you have a web page that if you click on a link, it takes you to another web page? So we could say a hyperlink reference, www.facebook.com. And then we put these words, I like to go to Facebook a lot. So what this would do is, if you displayed this page to a web browser, the page would turn aqua. It would say, welcome to my page in big letters. And then in smaller letters, it would say, I like to go to Facebook. And if you clicked on that sentence, anywhere in that sentence, it would actually take you to Facebook. So and I'll, I'll, I'll create a web page, and I'll show you this page after. So this is a very simple example of an HTML page. OK, so when you're going out to a web server, you're basically saying, I would like some HTML file from you. Please send it back to me. And when it comes back, it gets displayed. 
from there you can click on another one or type in your password and hit login. That sends a message to them and they send you another page and it just goes on you know, all day like that. So you're just passing these HTML files back and forth. So, um, which file on the server do we get? Okay, so now the thing is this. <coughs> If the web page, if, if a website has many pages to it, right? And every, just about every website has more than one page to it. Um, which file are you asking for when you say just the URL? When you just say www.facebook.com and the Facebook server has many, many files on it, which one should it send you, right? right this is kind of an interesting question. So for example, this web page right here, this is the Monmouth University's website. So if you went to HTTP, colon slash slash, that says, I'm trying to go through the internet and I want to communicate with HTML files. The URL is www.monmouth.edu. That's the name of the server. Now, once I get to the server, I'm saying I want to go to the academics folder and then I want to go, in there there's a folder called accounting, and then in there there's a file called default.asps. That's the page I'm looking for. So if I did this by going on the internet, from block from anything, so, uh, let's see. Okay, so, if, so for example, so right here, here's the point I'm getting at. I went to the monmouth.edu server, but I didn't specifically say what file do I want. And it just it happened to pick one and send it to me. And what I want to try to get at is which, where was the one it sent me and why did, it, why did it pick that file. But if I went to academics, if I go to academics, and I pick on academic departments and then I pick on accounting. So this is a web page that's saying I want to go to the academics area the website, the academic department, and pick on the accounting department, if I click on this file, I'm telling the server I would now like a different page. So now what I got was the accounting department's page. And where is this page? Well, it's on the Monmouth server, and then it's slashed under academics, so there's a folder on the server called academics. And then inside that folder, there's a bunch of folders, and one of those folders' name is accounting. And then in that folder, there's a page called default.asps, and that's what we're looking at. That's the HTML file that just came back to us. So you could ask for any file that's on a public server if you know the exact path and the exact name of the file, right? You just If you know exactly what you're asking for, um, you can get the, uh, the page you want. So now the thing is this. When we went to the original page, we just went to monmouth.edu. We didn't say what file we wanted. We didn't say what folder it's in. We just know the server's name. Or if you go to facebook.com, you don't know what file and you don't know what folders they have on their server. You just know the uh, name of the server. So shouldn't the server say something like, you know, shouldn't an error message come back saying, what file do you want? I have many files, which one are you asking? Right? But that would be annoying, right? I mean, if, if you told, like, let's say if you wanted to go to Facebook and log in, you were told you have to go to www.facebook.com slash login slash welcome.html, you know, some long thing that takes a lot to remember. That would be annoying, and people might say, I don't want to use this. I don't want to, I can't, it's too much stuff to remember. So, um, so, so this is kind of an example. Nobody would ever remember this. I don't think. Mama.edu slash academics slash accounting slash default.asp. But if you remember the Mama page, you would very, easily be able to find it. You find the menu for academic departments, you find the accounting department, you hit it. And then the server will, the server knows this name and will send this page to you. So all we really have to do to get somebody to come to our website is just get them to remember this, www.whateverthisis.com. And then we want to be able to send them something. And the something we send them, from there they can get to everything. 
that works great, right? They don't have to remember a whole lot. And they can, they'll eventually, they'll, they'll easily remember our website. We'll send them something. And then from that something, they'll be able to get to everything else, right? So, um, okay. So the URL slash the folder slash the file name is the way you ask for a web page. So it would be painful to ask someone to go to your website and then you tell them the URL plus the directory path to get to some file that you're interested in them getting to plus then the file name. It would just be too much for them to remember. You'd like to be able to say something like go to www.facebook.com and then that's it and from there they'll be fine. So, but the server doesn't know which file you want, right? So if you had a suggestion, what could we do, what would you suggest? If somebody came to your server and didn't say specifically what file they want, you would send them some file that hopefully can get them to every other file. What would, uh, what mechanism would you? Well, uh, just like for as far as servers are concerned, what uh, file would you send back to them? Was that? Homepage. So yeah, that's a lot of students. I've asked that in the past. What, what what would be the name of the file that you would just send if they don't ask for a specific file? Just grab one and send it to them. And most people say homepage.html. And unfortunately, I, I kind of wish they picked that one. But when you uh, when you open up a book and you want to find something in the book, what do you do? You open up the index and then look through the index and go, oh, the thing I'm looking for is on page 29, then you go to page 29. So the index is the thing that gets you to everything else. So they decided to use the name. Um, they basically decided to do this. So this is the way we make life easy on people who don't know exactly what page they want. They just know the URL, which is just a nickname for the server. So we have a folder called public underscore HTML. So this is where we keep our HTML files that are available to the public. And we'll use a file called index.html, which you just suggested homepage.html might have been better. So I think when the internet was being first invented, they said, well, the first page will be used like as an index to get to everything else. But we've since used the word homepage to mean the first page you see. So it would be nice if they changed this to homepage.html, but they'd have to update all the browsers in the world, because, or all the servers, because all the servers, when you request a page from a server and you don't say what page, it always looks in this folder for this file and just sends that file. Um, then after that, any other page you want, you'd have to specifically say its name, the whole path. But hopefully this page can get you to click to all the other pages and then therefore you don't have to remember what any of those are. And I put a little note down here that it doesn't have to end in .html. That's the way originally the internet was developed, but later on .php, .asp, index.htm, and index.jsp, etc. Those were also acceptable files to have. So, um, so now this is something just particular about Monmouth University. So, Monmouth University has a server, and its name is Zorak2. Is Zorak some uh, cartoon character? Some like grasshopper or something like that? So, they used to name their uh, servers here after like. Superman and Batman, and then they're like running out of stuff. So now it's like, this is some cartoon character, Zorak. But anyway, and then they had Zorak, and now they have a Zorak 2. So the URL zorak2.monmouth.edu is the name for a server that's connected to the, uh, the internet. Um, there is no www before it, so you would just go to zorak2.monmouth.edu, and a page will come back to you. Each student at Monmouth University has their own web server on this server. So, um, if you log into your account right now, so you guys log into your account, if you click on my computer, right, if you click on my computer, one of your drives is the M drive, and it says, it'll say your student ID on Zorak2, or Zorak2 with your student ID, something like that, right? And if you click on that, there's a folder in there called public underscore HTML, and it's probably empty unless you've it in from some other class. So it's empty right now? Okay. So if somebody went to, um, okay, so assuming you had a file called index.html in your public HTML folder, right now your folders are empty, but if there was something there, if somebody from anywhere in the world 
went to http colon slash slash zurich2.monmouth.edu slash and then this tilde thing and then your student ID, it will send them into that folder looking for a file called index.html. And if there was one there, it will come back to them and they can see whatever whatever you put in there. So uh, okay, so let's see. Um, what we'll do now, we'll make a really quick web page, um, and what we're going to, oh, so you know what, let me, uh, let me first do this. Um, I'm going to take the slide I had, um, where's that web page, this one. So I'm going to take this, and just to get the idea across. Uh -oh. uh, I'm going to take this code, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go to my computer. I'm going to go, this is my login, and I'll go to my folder, public HTML, and what I'll do, I'll just make a file right here. I'll just come in and make a brand new file, a .txt file. And I'll give it a name. I'll say, what should I call this file? I'll call it, uh, I'll call it the uh, Aqua, Aqua page. Aqua page, I'm going to change its name to HTML. It's going to say, do you realize you're damaging the, you know, the file? Uh, yeah, do you know you may damage it by changing the extension? Change it anyway, yes. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it. I have a question. Is there a way to get these on? These PowerPoints you have? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, po I'll post them on the on a, the, a website for the class. We, uh, I was going to say, this is not on the campus, really. I guess it's an independent study or something. Yeah, so I'll, I'll post those. But anyway, so what I'm doing now is, in my public HTML folder, I made a file called Aqua Page, and I copied these this stuff in from the slides. So now, do you want to you want me to change something just so you know I didn't have this set up? Do you, should we change the color to some other color, or, or change the text? Anything you want, I can change, and then I'll then I'll show this what these instructions do to a web browser. But anything you want to change? Sure, change aqua to red. Red? Okay. The red comes out pretty bright red here, but and what should I change? The uh, welcome to. Say the uh, independent study page. Okay, so I'll save this. Now you could you could view this page now. If you bring up a web browser and you go to Zurich 2, dot mom, mom. edu slash tilde b b y r n e that's my login and then slash now because I, I didn't call it index so we have to ask for the specific name but after this we'd say aqua page dot html it's always you oh no, <laughs> I, I spelled it wrong okay okay Oh, that's bright red. Okay, so basically, those code, the, the, that file, which was an HTML file, this browser, which is on the computer here in this room, the the uh, Zurich server is in the other building, the Edison building. So from my browser, I'm going over to the Edison building, and I'm saying, I want this file. I want to go under vburn, look in the public HTML folder, and look for this file. And when you get that file, send it back to me, and I will display it based on its instructions. So the HTML instructions painted the screen red, and it said, welcome to the independent study page. And then this is a hyperlink. I like to go to Facebook a lot. So if I click on that, it'll take me to Facebook. So now, if you didn't know the name Facebook, you don't need to. If you can get to this page, you can then get to Facebook, right? And we could, from there, get to other pages and so on. So the HTML code, it's just a file sitting on a server. You're going to the server and you're asking for it. When it comes back, based on the instructions, it displays it. So any way you can create HTML, you could type it in by hand, 
And here's another thing you can do if you wanted to save a copy of this. Anytime you bring up a uh, page, you can right click and then say view source. And this is actually, this is your web browser saying, I don't know who sent this to me, but this is what they sent. And this is what I'm displaying. So if you wanted to, you can cut and paste this and save it into your own folder if you want. So it's a very simple, a simple web page, but this HTML code is causing your browser to print this. So what our goal is, in this whole course basically, is to create HTML files. But as you can see, just to paint the screen red and have two sentences, that's not all this painful stuff. That the H1 is HTML code, that means um, that it's like headline one, you can do headline one, two, and three, and they'll get smaller and smaller. But it's kind of like saying, print these words in big letters. And then these words get printed in smaller letters, but because it's a hypertext reference, it's underlined, and if you put your mouse on it, it starts you know, blinking and stuff. So, if you wanted to do something really simple like this, you'd have to kind of memorize a lot of HTML and know exactly what to type in. And then if you ever forgot, like see this is uh, headline one and then this is the end of the headline one, to know anything after this should not be in big letters. If you kind of forgot this or spelt it wrong or used a capital H, it wouldn't know to stop it and then all of the paragraph after that would be in huge letters. Like the slightest mistake could turn your web page very up. So in the late, in the mid 90s, people used to write HTML like this by hand. And then companies like Microsoft and Adobe started making tools that you can look at something like this. Like you would type welcome and you'd say background is red and you start typing welcome and you just shade it and say make it bigger. And it would create all this stuff for you. That makes it a lot easier to use. So what we'll do, just as a little two minute example, we'll do this. So you guys don't have a web page. You, you guys right now don't have a, uh, um, we were, we're gonna use, instead of typing an HTML in by hand, we're gonna use something you're comfortable with, Microsoft Word to create a web page. And then when we're done creating the web page, we're just going to say save it as an HTML file and it will just work. So here's what we'll do. So our goal is to create a file called index.html in your public HTML folder so that it can be viewed by the whole world. So what we'll do is go to your HTML folder. So just go, go into the folder, which is right now empty. And create a new Word document called index.docx. So just create a new file called index. And we're doing this on purpose. We're picking the name index so that way when we go to save it later as an HTML file, it'll already have that name. So then open it up and just do something real quick. It, you know, it doesn't have to be too elaborate, but we'll go like this. Um, I'll make a new folder. So here's like what you guys are doing. You have an empty folder. You make a new Word document called index.doc. Open it up, and it's a typical Word document. So what we're doing now is we're taking advantage of all the functions that come up in Word. And so what we're doing is, so like, how do you change the background of a Word document? You say uh, background. Layout, back page color, and you can pick a color, right? So that's a word function. You can change the background color, and then you can type in welcome, welcome to, you can put your name in. You can uh, shade this and make uh, the print much bigger. You can make it bold, and you can, oh, you can make it like these letters. Okay. 
So what I'm basically doing is uh, I'm using, I could even add a picture of that. But uh, I guess I'll just leave it at this now. Any, anything else from Word that we could add that would make this interesting? Anyway, just something like this, right? And you, you can insert pictures into your page, right? So now what I'm doing is, this is a Word doc. This has nothing to do with HTML yet. So I'll save it. I'll save it. Because we might want to use it later. But now what we're going to do, so have you guys gotten some things going on your web pages? So we'll take a look at all your pages in a second. So um, now let's do save as. So click on the save as. And a, a box pops up. Save as basically means it gives you an opportunity to change the name or the type. See this type thing? So Microsoft Word added in tons of types. And one of them, which is pretty cool, um, they did this web page one. So let's pick on the web page one, not the web page filter one. We'll pick on the web page one. And we'll save it with that type and hit save. So we change the type to web page and then we hit save. So now if you go to your folder, it should look like this. So this is something, this will make sense later on in the course. This is the Word document. This is the file you just saved, but do you also have this folder, this index file? Okay. This page will read and write, will, will read from this page. And this will make sense later on in the course. But anyway, if you now go to your web page, you'll, you'll see the HTML. First of all, you can open this up if you want. Um, so this is the file you just created, and this is a huge HTML document. But these are all HTML codes. And you see at the bottom it has the HTML end and the body end and that kind of thing. But it, it's actually a pretty complicated version of what your page just did. But if we go to... Zorak 2. Slash. Now, where did I put it? Um, word stuff. Uh, word stuff. Okay. Yeah, word stuff, right? So I put it under Drupal Slash. Now I don't have to say the name of the file because it'll always look for index if I don't give a name. No, that wasn't. Um, it was under. Oh, I see two fifty. Okay. So under under I T two fifty slash word stuff. And there's my. Oh, it took away the uh, the mirroring effect. So there's some things Word can do that HTML can't do. But anyway, this is something like what I did. So if you guys did, if you guys did a save, I can see yours if you're interested. <laughs> Anyone want to volunteer their student ID? This 0675 Oh, 0675. Oh, no, 7, beginning. Oh, sorry. 0, sorry. 6, 7, Yep. So yeah, so this is what you just made. So you know, so basically you changed the page blue, typed in your name, and but it, it didn't do the. Uh, it didn't. Some of the the effects weren't done, right? Well, the words were blue. Oh, the words were blue. But I did it as like the uh, word art, I think. So. Oh okay. Yeah. So some of the effects that Word can do, um, when you say save as HTML, there is no corresponding equivalent. Like, a, like kind of that water reflecting thing. It doesn't really have that, so it just gets lost. But. So what we've basically done here is we've taken Microsoft Word as a tool to make an HTML file. Now, Word isn't the greatest, uh, Word isn't the greatest um, tool for doing that. So, okay, so notice that what we've done is we've created HTML files by, by hand. Creating HTML files by hand could be very time consuming. Um, notice we use Word to generate a nice web page very quickly, right? Because we're comfortable with Word. Once you get really comfortable with Word, you can make a really nice web page. 
using Word. Um, there are other tools besides Word that we can use to generate HTML. Adobe is a company that makes Photoshop, and there's a tool that they use makes called Dreamweaver. It's very popular now in the industry. For a while, Microsoft had a had a uh, a tool called Front Page. There's actually a big poster on the lab downstairs. Microsoft Front Page 2006 or something like that. But um, basically, the the industry kind of got you know it's kind of like the Betamax and VHS. You know, Adobe kind of won the battle, and it's a pretty popular tool. Most website design companies use. Uh, Dreamweaver. So Dreamweaver is a tool that looks like Word. When you open it up, and you know, I will open it up. Um, I'm going to. This is the symbol for it, DW. So it's on all the computers here. And when you open it up, so what, we won't be using Word to generate HTML. We'll be using Dreamweaver to generate HTML. And when you open it up, it's kind of like you can you can put it in a split screen mode, and on one side it'll look like Word, and on the other side you'll see the HTML that you're making by using the Word thing. So uh, if I wanted to make a brand new website, I could go like this. I could say File, New, and I could say I want a blank page, I want it to be an HTML page, and even like these are kind of standard looking web pages, like for example, you might want to have, this is kind of the way Facebook is. It has like kind of a blue thing across the top, then a big center section, and then a thing on the bottom that tells you like how to get a job there, or you know. So you can pick any one of these templates and just click on it, and it create. And right away, it's making, it's making a web page for you. What's the difference between the locks and like the like the links from um... uh, the, uh, the different choices? Yeah. Some of, some of them will be uh, fixed size blocks and some would be like if one block was very small the other block would fill up the remainder of the space but we'll go over that a little bit later. But um, so basically um, what it's doing is this, this side of the uh, HTML file as you're making it. And then at the end we just save it and then that's what, you know, we'll be able to do it a, a lot quicker that way. 